I wouldn't mind editing a couple of properties on this thing that I call a body. Hey Pinnacle Studio peeps, how y'all doing out there? My name is Malik and I'm back on your screen with more Pinnacle Studio love from PinnacleStudioPro.com. Today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the editor properties in Pinnacle Studio 21 Ultimate. So let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Pinnacle Studio 21 Ultimate. Before I get started, I want to remind you guys to subscribe to Pinnacle Studio Pro for great tricks and tips like this every Saturday. Let's make it happen, people. I like to think that the people over at Corel decided to trim the fat. Fat trimage, okay? I'm trying to be French. I know I don't sound that way. Fat trimage. They put Pinnacle Studio on a bit of a diet because what they did was they made the workflow a lot easier by making it easy to navigate and get to things and trimming the fat trimage, okay? For example, on previous versions of Pinnacle Studio, if you right click on a clip in the timeline, there was an option to open effects editor. That option is no longer here because it's no longer necessary. What they've done now is they've added a editor button which gives you options to get to those effects, make changes to clips, make corrections, all kind of good stuff. So in order to access that editor feature, you need to make sure that you have a clip on the timeline. And when you do, you need to click on it with your left mouse button. And when you see a orange line around that clip, you'll know that you can access the editor function. So now I'm gonna click on the editor button and you see the options on screen. So there's a lot of options on here, but we're gonna stick to the properties area in this video. So under properties, you have your position, size, rotation, corner curve, opacity, border, and cropping. So you can change and control all of those different settings. Over here to the right, you have the ability to collapse or expand all of the settings. So if I click on this, it will collapse everything and bring it all up. And if I click on it again, it'll expand everything. Then there's also a reset button. So if I started to make changes to all kinds of stuff and it was all jacked up, towed down from the flow down, then I could click on reset and it'll reset everything back to the original position, basically back to zero or 100 based on whatever parameter you're changing. Right above the reset button, we have a button to expand your property section. So if I click on this, then the property section gets larger. So you have a larger view of it. Uh, you still have your keyframes here. And if I click on it again, then it will collapse it and it will open up this other side. So this other side is your video clip timeline. So it is only the time or duration of the clip that you selected when you opened up the editor section. So you can see here that at the end, we're at like 20 seconds, then it has a little line here. So this is probably about 22 seconds. And if I hover over this clip on the timeline, you see that the duration over to the right is 22 seconds and six frames. So that is exactly the amount of time of this timeline here for your video clip. Now this is used to go ahead and help you add keyframes at specific times and have a uh, greater visibility over where those keyframes are and be able to manage the changes that you do right here in one place. All right, so what I'm gonna do is go through the different settings to give you an idea of what they do and maybe add some keyframes to some of them to make a little animation of this video clip. So the first option we have is position. So you got horizontal, so you can move things to the left, you can move things to the right, uh, you can move things up and you can move things down. And if you have to click on this button here, it'll go ahead and disable or enable the feature and I can bring it back to zero where it was. If I click on it again, it's going to bring it back to the previous setting. 
Okay, so what I want to do is I want to change the vertical. So I'm going to add a keyframe here. And I'm going to actually move this all the way up. And I think 100 will be fine. I don't want to move it too far off the screen. And it'll take a long time for it to come back onto the screen. So at this first keyframe, it's actually off the screen. I'm going to move my playhead to a new position. And this is good here. If I want to move it forward a few extra frames, I can use the step one frame button under the preview window to get it where I want. And now I'm at exactly 10 seconds. So I can either click on the add a keyframe button or I can change the parameters here and it will add a keyframe. I'm going to just change this number to zero and hit enter and it'll add a keyframe and it'll move the video to that position. So what will happen? What do you think? What do you think will happen if I play this? You're right. It's going to come down. Beautiful. Okay. Since I can see the entire video, I'm going to put it on this keyframe. And what I just clicked on was this button to navigate keyframes. Now that I have keyframes enabled for vertical, I can navigate between keyframes by using these arrows, or I can remove a keyframe by using this remove keyframe button. So these will only appear once you have a need for them and you've added keyframes. So now we have size. So at this position, I'm going to add a keyframe because I want it to be 100%. I want it to fill out the screen. But at this previous keyframe, I want to make it really small. So I'm going to go back to this keyframe and I'm going to move this down to zero. And so what will happen now is if I preview this or if I scrub the timeline is it will start off small and it's going to come down and get larger as it goes to the 10 second mark. And at the 10 second mark, it'll fill out the screen and it'll stay at that position. All right. So next we have rotation. So I'm going to do the same thing here. I want this to have a keyframe here and I want it to not be rotating at this position. So I'm going to leave this keyframe at zero, but now I'm going to navigate back to the first keyframe by clicking on this button here and I'm going to make it rotate twice. So that would be 720. So now that I have the first keyframe set to negative 720, it should spin and once it gets to the 10 second mark, it'll stop spinning. So it's going to come down. It's going to get bigger and spin all three of those changes that I made. So let's see if I scrub the timeline. There it is spinning. It's getting bigger, coming down and it lands into, into place at 10 seconds. All right. So I'm going to go back to that 10 second keyframe again, and now we're at opacity. So for opacity, that's going to control the how opaque the image is, or you want to call it transparent, whatever you want to call it. So you can see here that I can change the opacity. So I'm going to add a keyframe. And at this keyframe, I want it to be 100% at 10 seconds because that's where everything stops. But let's say I go back to the first keyframe. And maybe I just make it like, uh, I don't know, 50. So now when I play this, you'll see that it starts off kind of opaque and then the color starts to come back in full. And if you don't like that, you can always change it. Let's go down a little bit to 25 and see how that looks. It looks better. All right. So I'm going to scroll down here to get the rest of the options on screen. So next we have corner curve. So I'm going to go back to that 10 second keyframe so you can see everything. And I'm not going to add this one in, but I will show you what it looks like. So basically you can add corner curves and you can use keyframes to control the corner curves as well. I'll move this back to zero. You also have a border. So you have the width of the border. 
And I'm going to move this over a little bit so you can see the border. And I'm change the color of the border as well from black because everything out here is black. So I'm going to change it to red so you can see it. So there's the border. You can change the softness of the border. What kind of great options for that? Gonna get rid of the border. Don't really want one on here. And let's move this back to the 10 second keyframe so I can show you the last option, which is cropping. So you can independently crop the left, top, right, or bottom. And and you got to do is use your sliders to crop it how you want. Do them one at a time. You can use them all. Whatever you feel you need. So those are all the changes. So now I'm going to go ahead and go back to library. And I'll go ahead and click on the play button. And as a cool little animation, just made for fun using the editor properties. You can use them however you want. There's a lot of different flexibility that you get by using that tool. And I recommend you take advantage of it to make your videos so lovely. Wonderific and lovely. All right, Pinnacle Studio peeps. I want to thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I'd like to send a shout out to one of our YouTube subscribers, Edward Ted. Edward Ted makes YouTube videos on music. So if you are musically inclined and you want to check out some of Edward's music videos, head on over to his channel, watch a few of his videos. If you're feeling what he's dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you want to get a shout out like Edward Ted did, make sure that you go to the video description and fill out our shout out request form. If you have a tutorial that you'd like us to make, Go to the video description and fill out our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click on that. It lets people know that the content in this video was good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk, chop it up with your boy, do those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash that subscribe button. And after you do that, click on the bell. When you do that, you'll receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube, and that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.